Hi everyone. In this series of tutorials, I'm going to walk you through a Cinema DNG workflow for editing a multicam music video using DaVinci Resolve 9 and Adobe Premiere Pro CC. One of the reasons that I think this series of tutorials is going to be particularly valuable for a lot of people working with Cinema DNG is because one of the biggest challenges that working with Cinema DNG footage presents is simply dealing with the massive file size. So what I'm going to show you how to do in this series of tutorials is how to take a large amount of footage and get it into a manageable workflow. To get started, I just want to give you a little bit of information about the project that we're going to be working with for this series of tutorials. So essentially what I have for media is multiple takes of the same song for a music video that is about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. And this music video was recorded all using one camera. So while the audio syncs for each of the individual clips, there is no way to match the individual shots besides with the audio. Overall, I have about 55 minutes of footage, which with the camera I'm working with translates into about 320 gigabytes. So as you can imagine, if I was trying to do a multi-cam edit with 320 gigabytes of footage, that might present some problems, especially where I want to be running multiple streams of the footage while I'm editing so that I can be making edit decisions in real time and choosing which clips are the best from each of my different camera angles. So the first thing that we're going to need to do to start managing this footage is to create some proxies from our original source material. And to do that, I'm in DaVinci Resolve 9 and I'm on the media page here. And the first thing I need to do is just import my Cinema DNG audio files and image files into the media pool down here. So to do that, I'm just going to right click on the folders that have the media and I'm going to select add folder and subfolders into media pool. And that's going to pull in my clips and my audio files from that folder. And I actually have two folders worth of media here. So I'm also going to add this second folder. And that is my footage that I'm going to be working with for this project. And as you can see, it's quite a few clips and quite a few audio files. So now that I've brought my content into my media pool, the next thing I need to do is to relink my audio files with my video files. And the reason that I need to do that is so I have a reference that's going to allow me to sync all of the different angles later on in Premiere Pro. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the conform page. And if I go up here to master timeline and I right click, it's going to give me the option to link with audio from selected bins. And if I select that, it's going to put this little speaker icon down here at the bottom of my clip. And if I scrub along the timeline, we can see over here that I have audio levels appearing and that my audio has been successfully linked with my video clips. The next thing I want to do in creating my proxies is just do a baseline color correction. So I'm going to go to the color page and on this page, I'll be able to see all of my different clips that I'm working with. And now the footage that I'm working with in this example was shot with the Iconoscope AKM D2. So the exact steps for your specific camera might be a little bit different than what I'm about to do here. But ultimately what you want to do is just set up your Cinema DNG files in a way that matches your camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my settings and I like working in Asus color space. And so I'm going to switch to DaVinci Aces. You can also use DaVinci YRGB if you prefer that. And with the ACES selected, I'm going to go into image scaling and I'm going to change it to center crop with no resizing. And that's just going to crop off the edges of my frame that are left on there by the ACAM. The next thing I'm going to do is go into lookup tables and on my input device transform, I'm going to set that to cinema DNG and output device transform. I'm going to select rec 709 and then I'm just going to hit apply. And as you can see, that has updated my image here. And one thing about what I'm doing right now is that I really want to create a quick, simple proxy, but I also want the color correction and color balance to be a little bit more accurate. So all I'm going to do is create a very quick look that I'm then going to apply to all of my clips before I export my proxies. So to do that, if I bring up my scopes here, just so you can see what I'm doing, and I'll set my blue channel is a little bit out of line with my other channels and also that I need to make some adjustments to the exposure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my primaries and I'm just going to offset the blue channel a little bit to make that balance a little bit better. I'm also going to go into my camera raw setting 
And when you're working with Cinema DNG, ideally this is the place where you would make all of your preliminary adjustments. So the more balance you can get using your color temperature, tint, and exposure here, the better. This is really where you want to be making the main changes to your raw data. So I'm going to switch from project to clip. And I'm also going to turn on save with version. And essentially by checking this box, when I apply this look to my other clips, it will also apply my camera raw decode settings to those clips. So turn that on. And now I'm just going to adjust my exposure a little bit and the tint, my color temperature. And then I'm going to go back into my color wheels and I'm going to bring my lift down because I want my black point to sort of be a little bit lower down. And then I'm going to sort of adjust my midtones up. And all I'm trying to do here is get a little bit better starting point than what I had straight from the camera. And this is looking pretty good, but I just need to make a few more adjustments to the color. And overall, that looks like a pretty good basic starting point. Now, the reason I'm not spending a lot of time here and worrying about getting it perfect is because this is not my final color correction. Once I'm done editing my multicam project in Premiere Pro, I'm gonna come back into Resolve and do my final color grading then. So all this is is a starting point to give me something a little bit nicer to look at when I'm making my edit decisions. So the next thing I need to do is apply this look to the rest of my clips. And the easiest way to do that, if I move the scopes out of the way here a little bit, is simply to right click on the image here and do grab still. And that's gonna pull a still into my gallery. And then I'm going to apply this look to all my other clips simply by selecting the clips. And I'm going to just hold the shift key and that will select everything here in my timeline. And then I'm going to right click on my thumbnail here and do add correction. And that's going to add that correction to all of my clips here in my timeline. And so as you can see, that's a very quick way to sort of quickly grade a bunch of footage. So now that I have my initial grade done for my proxies. All that's left to do is to export these proxy files so that I can bring them into Adobe Premiere Pro CC for my edit. So to do that, I'm going to go to my deliver page. And on the deliver page, this is where I'm going to create my proxies. Now for this particular project, because I know I want to do a multicam edit with the clips, I actually am going to create the proxy files to be very, very small. And the reason I'm going to do that is because what I want to be able to do is play back multiple camera angles in real time. And if I make my proxy files too large, if I go and try to play back six or seven or eight clips at the same time, it's going to choke my hard drive and it's not going to play back in real time. So if you have a very fast rate array, you might be able to get away with higher resolution proxies. But for the system I'm working on right now, and also just to give you a sense of how scalable this workflow is, I'm going to create very low resolution proxies. Because a lot of times there's a trade-off between quality and the ability to play back lots of clips and lots of media at the same time. And in this instance, since I know I'm going to come back into Resolve later to finish the edit, I'm not too worried about preserving the quality. I just need to be able to generally see what's going on just so I can sort of make some edit decisions. But ultimately, the final look and the final grade and the final color correction is going to be done back in Resolve. So the only thing I'm doing with these files is using them for edit decisions as part of a multicam sequence. And since I know that, I know that the lower the resolution, the more angles I'll be able to play back in real time. So I'm going to render to QuickTime. And under QuickTime, I'm going to render to H.264. But there's multiple options here. And of course, the thing about working with proxies is you can really scale it to your own editing system to whatever you can work with. So I would work with the highest quality possible on your system that plays back in real time for what you're doing. So I'm just going to select QuickTime H.264. And as I mentioned, I'm going to set the resolution very low. So I'm going to set my resolution to 640 by 360. Next thing I want to do is change my compression quality and I'm just going to knock it down to high. 
And I also want to make sure that I'm rendering out the audio because that's my sync point that I'm going to use to set up my multicam sequence. I also want to make sure that I'm rendering out individual source clips. Single clip will just render out the entire timeline as one big clip, everything connected, but individual source clips will keep everything as a separate file. So make sure that you have that selected. Next, I need to select where I want to render my job to. So I'm going to hit browse and select my location, which is this music video workflow proxies. And I also can create a subfolder here to make sure they don't overwrite anything else. I'll just call that proxies. And down here, I also want to make sure I have use source file name selected. And this will make it so that I can relink my proxies after I'm done with my multicam edit. Down here at the bottom, I don't really need to worry about any of these. If you are interested in these settings a bit more in depth, I do have another tutorial that spends some time going through the individual settings and creating proxies. Also over here in my timeline, I wanna make sure that I have all of my clips selected. And I do in fact, because I can see over here in the duration that it's 55 minutes, 19 seconds, and 23 frames. However, if I did not have everything selected, I could do that by right clicking on the timeline and doing select all. And that would just make sure that all of the clips in my timeline were selected for export. And the next thing I need to do is simply hit add job and say continue to that warning. And next I'm just going to hit start render. And on my system, this goes not quite in real time. So it's gonna take about an hour and 16 minutes to export the proxy files for 55 minutes of footage. So I'm just gonna let these proxies export. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to import these proxies into Adobe Premiere Pro CC and use them to create a multicam clip so that we can easily create an edit from all of our multiple camera angles for this music video.